Good morning, Tenney students. I'm Marissa Safi. Welcome back to March Madness. I hope you enjoyed week one. Competing in week two, we have The Grumpy Pirate, read by Taliani Diaz, going against Library Lion, read by Saf Brigitte. Hope you enjoy. Arg me, mateys! I can't believe we meet again for the next round. Today, Taliani Diaz will be reading about my best bud, The Grumpy Pirate, again. Arg! My name's Taylor, and today I'm going to be reading to you The Grumpy Pirate with my pet Jimbo. Pirates aren't grumpy, pirates never pout, pirates smile and shout aye aye whenever they're about. But there is one grumpy pirate, they call him Grumpy Gus, he grunts and gripes and grouses and always makes a fuss. He wakes up in his hammock and starts his day off grumpy, my breeches are too itchy, my pillow is too lumpy. He will not eat his hard act, he will not drink his grog. He glares out through the porthole and grumbles at the fog. The other pirates do their best to help Gus try to smile, but he just scowls and snivels. Smiling is not my style. He skips his shift to swab the deck. He hates the coil ropes. Instead of helping trim the sails, he mutters and mopes. When it's his turn to take the helm, Gus whines. This job's too tough. The other pirates finally say, we have all had enough. Gus moans, this ship's too tippy. Our course is, our too slow. The deck is way too slippery. I think I'll go below. The pirates ask their queen for help. Grumpy Gus is such a crank. Please save us from his grumpiness or he'll have to walk the plank. The pirate queen, who is quite wise, brings Gus a special friend. I'm giving you a parrot to help your grumping end. Gus glows at the parrot. He asks, what good are you? What good are you? The parrot asks, and the parrot glowers too. The parrot follows Gus around all day and echoes at him. Arg, arg. He grumbles and he grouches in a very gus like way. <laughs> I'm tired and I'm hungry. I'm cold and I'm hot. I'm feeling very grumpy, so I will frown a lot. Gus wails. This parrot's crabby. He's a sword spirit, a brat. His voice is way too whiny. Do I really sound like that? Sorry, Gus, the wise queen says. The parrot sounds just like you. But if you change your attitude, the parrot will change too. I don't know if I could do it, Grumpy Gus begins to groan, but then he hears himself and says, I'll try to change my tone. Gus tries his smiling at his best. The parrot tries a beaky grin. This makes Gus start to giggle and the pirates laugh at him. Mate, you've called me Grumpy and I see, says Gus. Twice true, now just call me Grinning Gus. Aye, aye, shout all the crew. Aye, 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 aye. All done. Roar! Hello, it's me, the Library Alliance's other son, Salvarius Bartholomew Griffith III. Once again, Saf will be reading about my book-loving dad. Ciao, ciao! My name is Safira Burgett, and today I'm reading The Library Lion by Michelle Knudsen, illustrated by Kevin Hawks. One day, a lion came to the library. He walked right past the circulation desk and up into the stacks. Mr. McBee ran down the hall to the head librarian's office. Miss Merriweather, he called. No running, said Miss Merriweather, without looking up. But there's a lion, said Mr. McBee, in the library. Is he breaking any rules, she asked. <clears throat> she was very particular about rule breaking. Well, no, said Mr. McBee, not really. Then leave him be.
The lion wandered all around the library. He sniffed the card catalog. He rubbed his head against the new book collection. Then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. And soon it was time for story hour. There weren't any rules about lions at story hour either. The story lady seemed a little nervous, but she read out the first book's title in a good, clear voice. The lion looked up. The story lady kept reading. The lion stayed for the next story, and the story after that. He waited for another story, but the children began to walk away. Story hour is over, a little girl told him. It's time to go. The lion looked at the children. He looked at the story lady. He looked at the closed books. Then he roared very loud. Roar, said the lion. Miss Merriweather came striding out of her office. Who is making that noise, she demanded. It's the lion, said Mr. McBee. Miss Merriweather marched over to the lion. If you cannot be quiet, you will have to leave, she said in a stern voice. Those are the rules. The lion kept roaring. He sounded sad. The little girl tugged on Miss Merriweather's dress. If he promises to be quiet, can he come back for story hour tomorrow, she asked. The lion stopped roaring. He looked at Miss Merriweather. Miss Merriweather looked back. Then she said, yes, a nice quiet lion would certainly be allowed to come back for story hour tomorrow. Hooray, said the children. The next day, the lion came back. You are early. <clears throat> you are early, said Miss Merriweather. Story hour is not until three o'clock. The lion did not budge. Very well, said Miss Merriweather. You might as well make yourself useful. She sent him off to dust the encyclopedias until it was time for story hour. The next day, the lion came early again. This time, Miss Merriweather asked him to lick all the envelopes for the overdue notices. Soon, the lion began doing things without being asked. He dusted the encyclopedias, he licked the envelopes, and he let small children stand on his back to reach books on the highest shelves. Then he curled up in the story corner to wait for story hour to begin. At first, the people in the library were nervous about the lion, but soon they got used to having him around. In fact, he seemed very well suited for the library. His big feet were quiet on the library floor, he made a comfy backrest for the children at story hour, and he never roared in the library anymore. What a helpful lion, people said. They patted his soft head as he walked by. How did we ever get along without him? Mr. McBee scowled when he heard that. They had always gotten along fine before. No lions were needed. Lions, he thought, could not understand rules. They did not belong in the library. One day, after he had dusted all the encyclopedias and licked all the envelopes and helped all the small children, the lion padded down to the hall to Miss Merriweather's office to see what else there was to do. There was still some time before left before story hour. Hello, lion, said Miss Merriweather. I know something you can do. You can bring a book back into the stacks for me. Let me just get it down from this shelf. Miss Merriweather stepped up onto the step stool. The book was just out of reach. Miss Merriweather stood on her toes. She stretched out her fingers. Almost there, she said. Then Miss Merriweather stretched a little too far. Ouch, said Miss Merriweather softly. She did not get up. Mr. McBee, she called after a minute. Mr. McBee, but Mr. McBee was at the circulation desk. He could not hear her calling. Lion, said Miss Merriweather, please go and get Mr. McBee. The lion ran down the hall. No running, said Miss Merriweather called after him. The lion put his big paws, his big front paws up on the circulation desk and looked up at Mr. McBee. Go away, lion, said Mr. McBee. I'm busy. The lion whined. He pointed his nose down the hall toward Mr. Miss Merriweather's office. Mr. McBee ignored him. Finally, the lion did the only thing he could think of to do. He looked Mr. B right in the eye, and then he opened his mouth very wide. And he roared the loudest roar he had ever roared in his life. Mr. McBee gasped. You are not being quiet, he said to the lion. You're breaking the rules. 
Mr. Rigby walked down the hall as fast as he could. The lion did not follow him. He had broken the rules. He knew what that meant. He hung his head he hung his head and walked toward the doors. Mr. McBee did not notice. Miss Merriweather, he called as he walked. Miss Merriweather, the lion broke the rules. The lion broke the rules. He burst into Miss Merriweather's office. She was not in her chair. Miss Merriweather, he asked. Sometimes, said Miss Merriweather from the floor behind her desk, there's a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Now please go call a doctor. I think I've broken my arm. Mr. McBee ran to call a doctor. No running! Miss Merriweather called after him. The next day, things were back to normal. Almost. Miss Merriweather's left arm was in a cast. The doctor had told her not to work too hard. I will not have my lion to help me, Miss Merriweather thought. But the lion did not come to the library that morning. At three o'clock, Miss Merriweather walked over to the story corner. The story lady was just beginning a story for the children. The lion was not there. People in the library kept looking up from their books and computer screens, hoping they would see a familiar furry face. But the lion did not come that day. The lion did not come the next day either, or the day after that. One evening, Mr. McBee stopped by Miss Merriweather's office on his, uh, on his way out. Can I do anything for you before I go, Miss Merriweather? He asked her. No, thank you, said Miss Merriweather. She was looking out the window. Her voice was very quiet, even for the library. Mr. McBee frowned as he walked away. He thought there was probably something he could do for Miss Merriweather after all. Mr. McBee left the library, but he did not go home. He walked around the neighborhood, he looked under cars, he looked behind bushes, he looked in tr backyards and trash cans and tree houses. Finally, he circled all the way back to the library. The lion was sitting outside, looking through the glass doors. Hello, lion, said Mr. McBee. The lion did not turn around. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a new rule at the library. No roaring allowed, unless you're trying to help a friend who's been hurt, for example. The lion's ears twitched. He turned around, but Mr. McBee was already walking away. The next day, <clears throat> Mr. McBee walked down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. What is it, Mr. McBee? To ask Miss Merriweather in her new sad, quiet voice, I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a lion in the library. Mr. McBee, Miss Merriweather jumped up from her chair and ran down the hall. Mr. McBee smiled. No running, he called after her. Miss Merriweather didn't listen. Sometimes there was a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. The end. That's the library lion.